Number 36. A copper wire has a resistance of 0.5 ohms at 20 degrees Celsius, and an iron wire has a resistance of 0.525 ohms at the same temperature. At what temperature are their resistances uh, equal? So, if we think about the nature of the information that's given in the problem, which by case it's being given that, uh, you know, the resistance of copper is 0.5 ohms, it's at a certain temperature, we're then talking about a different wire, has a different resistance, and then we're also talking about maybe changes in temperature, because now we're talking about new temperatures where the resistances are equal. I think it probably would be a very good educated guess that uh, we would be using the formula over here on the right-hand side, uh, that we have the resistance of a material is equal to the initial resistance, multiply them by 1, plus the temperature coefficient, all right, multiplied by then the change in temperature. All right. Now, what I like to do here is I don't like to leave this necessarily R sub O. I like to leave this uh, R sub, you know, F. All right. And this one, you call that sometimes R naught. Um, I'm going to call that Ri for initial. All right. Or you can call it A and B or B and C or X and Y. It doesn't really matter. All right. So um, what I realize is that I'm going to basically have two of these formulas uh, for each type of material. So let's say for, let's say, how do I want to organize this? So uh, let me write down, let, let's write this down for copper. Okay. And then we'll also write now uh, it down for iron. All right. So let's write RF is equal to RI. 1 plus alpha times delta t. All right, so just move this up ever so slightly. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to assume, all right, that uh, the temperature that was given is the initial temperature. It doesn't really tell me if it's initial or final, and that actually doesn't matter. All right, it's, what's important is that we call it one thing. Um, so I'm going to say now that the copper wire, what I'm going to start doing is plugging in then values for copper here into, in terms of this equation. So I'm going to write RF, I don't know what the final resistance will be at the new temperature, is equal to then that initial resistance. Now they told us that it was 0.5 right, ohms, multiplied then by 1 plus the temperature coefficient for copper. This is either memorized or you got to look it up on a table. It's going to be 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3. And then multiply now by the change in temperature. And remember, the change in temperature change is always going to be final minus initial. And so therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to plug in a value for the final temperature because, well, we don't know it, right? We don't know the resistance. They didn't tell me anything about uh, the final temperature. But they did tell me something about this initial temperature, so to speak. Or the temperature, up in the problem, when the resistance is 0.5. All right, so in other words, these two variables have to correlate with one another, right? Whatever the resistance is at a certain point in time, we're going to plug in the temperature at that particular point in time. So uh, we're going to minus that from 20, okay? Or minus 20 from the final. All right, so this becomes the equation for copper, all right? And I'm going to write this. I'm going to write just a little R, F, sub, C for now, all right, the, for copper. And over here, I'm going to write a little capital I. Uh, that might get a little confusing. So let me do the atomic symbols, right? So copper is Cu, and this is going to be Fe, right, for iron. So the same thing I'm going to do here for now iron. The final resistance for that iron wire is going to be equal to the initial. Now they told us that it was at the same temperature, it was going to be 0.525. Um, so I'm going to plug that in as the initial, 525. Uh, then it's going to be multiplied by 1 plus then the alpha for iron. That's going to be, again, from the table, 5.0 times 10 to the minus 3. And then multiplied by the change in temperature. Again, the final temperature of the copper, excuse me, of the iron here, and maybe I should label that sub Fe. I'm also going to go back to here and label that Cu, just so we're very consistent. And then we're going to subtract from that the same thing of 20, all right? Because that's what they told us. And I realize I need another parenthesis there. All right. So we have these two equations. Now, they also told us another piece of information, which is extremely important. It's also asking us at what temperature now, right? It says at what temperature or their resistance is equal. So what I need to now do is find this new temperature, or the final temperature, at which their resistances then are equal to one another. Let that sink in for a second, right? The resistances they're saying are equal. 
In other words, what I can now do is I can write that the final resistance of the copper wire should equal the final resistance of the iron wire. Okay, you could have also, by the way, it might have been a little better. You could have also started the problem with this. You could have started with the question I like to do a lot of times, and then we could work backwards. It totally depends. All right. From here, then I would have realized, well, I would have still thought about the nature of the information that's given. And I would have started plugging in these formulas, these formulas right here in particular. Okay. On both sides. So anyway, uh, let's start plugging in the values. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this whole thing in for the copper. All right, so we'll probably have to write this a little tiny. So it's 0.5 times n, and yeah, you know what? Uh, let me think. Should I start? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start doing some math here. All right, so we would plug this in, but I'm running out of space. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start distributing this value, all right, to each of those two terms. All right, so it's going to be 0.5 times n1 plus, this is going to, oh man, this is going to get messy, messy, messy. Me oh, you know what? Okay, I have an idea. I have an idea. Just bear with me for a second while I erase everything here. Because there will not be enough room. All right, let's get rid of this. And what I'm going to do here is we're going to take this term right in here. And we're going to move it. It's like magic, right? And then we're going to take this term. Remember that represents now the uh, iron. And we're going to move that now over onto, let's say, move this over a little bit. Sorry guys, just bear with me. By the way, how's your semester going so far? You're probably, I don't know, about a month in maybe, right, or so? Hopefully it's going well. Hopefully your Physics 1 class went well too. If it did, leave a comment below. And if it didn't, um, yeah, don't, don't, you don't need to say anything. No, I'm kidding. If it didn't, let me know too, all right? But I think it probably went pretty well. So, um, all right. So now, remember, this is what we were saying here is that this is the um, final resistance for the copper. And this was then equal to the final resistance of the iron, Fe. Now, look at this. It's messy, but there is one unknown. Right? There's basically one unknown. Okay? So, and now remember, what we're doing. Now, you might say, well, this, Andrew, what do you, what do you mean? You know, um, how is that the same value? You're telling me this is the temperature of the iron and this is going to be the temperature of the copper. Yeah, they're going to be the same temperature, right? Because it's saying at what temperature are their resistances equal? Okay, so essentially that becomes one variable now. So, or the same variable. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. So 0.5, then now what I'm going to start doing is I'm just going to call this like T, okay, just to simplify it. And then, so I'm going to write 1 plus, I'm going to take this and then multiply it by my t, so that becomes 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 t. So let's take uh, 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 and multiply it by then 20. So what do we get? We get a value of then 0 0.0.078. And that's then going to be equal to 0.525 multiplied by then 1 plus. Again, we're just going to turn that into a t, right? So we're going to simply take 5... 0 0.0, just 5 times 10 to the minus 3 t, and then subtract from that now 5 times 10 to the minus 3 times 20. Works out to be 0 0.1. And yeah, cool. Okay, so that works. And then I'm just checking the parentheses and whatnot. All right, so now uh, why don't we combine some like terms inside of here, right? So we're going to have 0 0.5 times then uh, 1 minus. 0 0.078, so 1 minus 0 0.078, and 0.922, 0 0.922, plus then 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3t, equals then 0 0.525, multiplied by then, again, we'll do the subtraction there, 1 minus, it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.1, so that's going to be 0 0.9, plus then 5 times 10 to the minus 3t, and now what I'd do is do a distribution, right? Distribute that term. Oh boy. So multiply that by 0 0.5. So this becomes 0 0.461 plus then 3.9 times 0.5. Oh, I messed that up. 3.9 times 10 to the minus 3 times 0 0.5. So this becomes 0 0.00195. 
I don't know why they, the calculator turned that into not scientific, but it doesn't really matter. Is that, and then we're going to multiply the other side, so 0.525 times 0 0.9, 0 0.4725, plus then, same thing, 0.525 times 5 times 10 to the minus 3, and here we go, we get a value of 0 0.002625t, and now we're going to combine some terms, right? So what we're going to do <clears throat> is we'll, I get a positive t, it really doesn't matter. Um, because it's going to come out, I think, um, yeah, it's going to come out to be negative already, I can see. So we'll subtract this term on over. Zero one nine five t Okay, great. And then I'm going to subtract this term on over. Uh, 0 0.4725. Great. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get those answers. So this goes bye-bye. This will go bye-bye. So point... 461 minus then 0.4725. So we get negative. So negative 0 0.0115. Is it going to be equal to 0 0.002625 minus 0 0.00195? And this becomes now 6.75 times 10 to the minus fourth t. And then you got to divide it by that. So 6.75 times 10 to the minus 4th, divide that side, 6.75 times 10 to the minus 4th, and now we're going to finally find that temperature, right? So we're going to take that value, divide it then by the second value, negative 17. So negative 17, I guess, 0. 0.0, yeah, that sounds good enough, right? Three sig figs, who cares, who cares, right? And there you go. So that's the temperature now at which their resistances would be equal. And how did we know that? Well, that's because we set up the equation that way, right? Those were the resistances, they were equal. And therefore, whatever temperature now we solve for will represent the temperature at which those uh, resistances are equal. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we will see you soon. Take care.